So Jesus gave us a parable in Matthew 22, the parable of the wedding feast. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Well, the son is the Lord Jesus Christ in terms of the kingdom. Jesus is telling us this parable to get us thinking. The king sends out his servants to invite people to the wedding, but they're not willing to come. They're like, I've got better things to do, God. I'm not coming to the wedding. So then God sends his servants out again, and the servants get killed by the people who would be invited to the wedding. And this makes the king furious, so he destroys, he destroys everything. All these people and their refusal to come to celebrate the wedding of his son. So he says to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited are not worthy. Go into the highways and as many as you find, invite them to the wedding. So the wedding hall was filled with guests, but then the king came in and saw a man there who did not have on the right garments. So the king was like, get rid of this guy. Think the church age. Think the lukewarm church. Think those who profess Christ, but I mean, their hearts aren't in it. They've got on the wrong garment. And the king says, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Like the kingdom of heaven, think about it. God's people refusing to follow him and obey him throughout history. God's servants being killed throughout history. The Lord Jesus Christ being the ultimate sacrifice, person who died for God. And the church age, full of people who profess Christ, but God says their hearts are far from me. The parable of the wedding feast represents what has gone on on this earth in terms of those who respond to God's call to come and attend the wedding feast and those who hear, they hear the call, but they do not respond. That's the difference between the many who are called. They hear God calling, come to the wedding feast, but they have better things to do. The chosen, few are chosen. The chosen are the ones who hear the call and say, yes, Lord, here I am. So the next riddle that God has given us is many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. When we solve a riddle, we take the letters, we unjumble them, and we say something new. God would have something else for us to hear coming out of the words, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now it's a riddle, so we need an extra I. Why? Because I am the one solving the puzzle, I. And we need an extra you, because you are the one who need to hear this. The answer, you are, you are, you are, of, O-F, you are of, lambs, L-A-M-B-S, you are of lambs, Wife, W-I-F-E. The only I in the riddle is in the word wife. To be of something means you come from. The next word is N, A-N. The next word is E D. You are of the lamb's wife and Ed. Well, we know the word Ed 
ed in the Hebrew, it is the word witness. The wife of the lamb is a witness. And we are to be witnesses when we are of the lamb's wife. You are a r e. Now it is a riddle, so we're going to see a C here and a C here. That's two of them. To see. You are to see with the word see meaning see. You are to see slash hear. H E A R. H E A R. Only O N L Y. Only. Who are we supposed to hear only? E T. E T. You are of the Lamb's wife. A witness. You are to see and hear only ET. The only one you are to listen to is the Christ, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the ET. The ET is the Aleph Tav in the Hebrew, which is the same way of saying the Alpha. And Omega. So if you are of the Lamb's wife, this only pertains to you if you are actually born of the Spirit. You are of the Lamb's wife, an Ed, a witness. You are to see, hear, only ET. Many are called, few are chosen. If you are of the Lamb's wife, then you will only listen to. You will only see what is of Christ. So, what does it mean to be of the Lamb's wife? What am I talking about? The Lamb's wife is the Holy Spirit. Let's just look at it like this Jesus has a wife. So far, that doesn't sound blasphemous. Jesus is the Lamb. And the Lamb has a wife. We read that in Revelation 19 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Revelation 20, verse 9. Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. He has a wife. Jesus has a wife. So far, there's no disputing that. But this is where people start to get a little bit upset, riled up. It's not what they've been taught. Jesus has a wife. Well, Jesus is God. Every single born again believer knows this. This is what the doctrines of the faith teach that Jesus is God. Well, if Jesus is God, that means God has a wife. If Jesus is God and Jesus has a wife, that means God has a wife. Remember last year I taught that Jesus is the faithful and true witness. This is how God showed me to do it. The faithful and true witness. And Jesus is the life giving spirit. And when we are born again, we are born again of the spirit. We are born again of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Jesus is the life giving spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of Jesus. The two are one. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. If we understand the Godhead, that the three are one, 
we understand that the two are one and being born on this earth we're born of a father and a mother well things are done in the image of God things are done in the image of God we aren't just born of a father we aren't just born of a male we're born of a male and a female a father and a mother we develop in the womb and we were born physical birth well think of the faithful and true witness in Revelation 314 it says these things says the Amen the Amen is Jesus these things says the Amen the faithful and true witness Jesus is the faithful and true witness well if you think of the birth that takes place when a person places their trust in the Lord they are born of the Spirit they are born of the life-giving Spirit Jesus and the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit of Jesus the two being one the two being one but one serves sort of like a father in the Spirit and one sort of serves like a mother in the Spirit and if you think of this as a womb the fallopian tubes I mean physically that's what it is a woman has a fallopian tube on this side and has a fallopian tube on this side remember faithful and true witness we're talking spiritual things but we're going to liken it to natural because everything that takes place in the natural is patterned after what happens in the spirit so fallopian tubes fallopian tubes and this right here is a womb w for womb faithful and true witness all right so what comes out of a womb fruit f r t comes out of a womb and the word fruit f r U I T. We needed an extra U and I to solve the riddle. For many are called, but few are chosen. U and I. Right there. So imagine this is a spiritual birth that's taking place. The fruit of the womb are those of us who are born again of the Spirit the two being one the Lord Jesus Christ and the wife of the Lamb we are born of them spiritually speaking because in the in the spirit there is no male or female there's just spirit but this is a picture to help you understand to be born of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit you are the fruit of that womb that spiritual womb why do I know it's the word fruit? Because it's my initials. Tara, Rand, Freihofer, Wesolowski. This is how God showed it to me. So that I would understand. So Jesus has a wife, the wife of the Lamb, means God has a wife. God has a wife. And she's all over Proverbs 8. She's all over Proverbs 8. Wisdom. She is the Holy Spirit. She is the wife of the Lamb. She is the wife of God. Now, if we are born of the Spirit, we are the children of the Spirit. God is Spirit. God became a man, Jesus. But Jesus is now seated back up with God at the right hand. He's spirit. He's a life-giving spirit. The Holy Spirit is his wife, the wife of the Lamb. If we are born of them, that means within us is the wife. Within us is the mother. Within us is the father. In natural terms, we are of our parents. There's a little bit of them inside of us. 
That's why the Holy Spirit resides in us because we are born of the Spirit. We are part of the family of God because we are the children of God. And the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we belong to him, that we belong to him. Now I know the scripture says he, himself, him. So in the scripture we're told there is neither male nor female in heaven. There's not. There's just spirit. God is spirit. But he has a nature. God said, let us create man in our image, male and female, which means God says, let us make a male and female in our image, which means our image is male and female. God is not a hermaphrodite. God is a spirit. And he has within himself the attributes of a loving father and a loving mother. But I would never say God is a woman. I would never say that. God is not. God is God. God is God. Who chose to make mankind in his image. And he created man first. But then out of man, out of man came a woman. So out of God comes a feminine. He's got that nature as well. But throughout the scripture, the Holy Spirit is referred to as he, him, himself. All right, God showed me a riddle to solve that one. These things weren't meant to be understood until the time of the end. And God is giving understanding to his people, to his children, more and more every day of these truths that I'm talking about right now. That the Holy Spirit is the wife of the Lamb. She is a witness. The Holy Spirit witnesses within us that we belong to him. The Holy Spirit is a witness. She is part of the Godhead. The only ones who can be witnesses, the true witnesses are the Godhead. They're the only ones who really know all of it. But the word himself, God showed me a riddle to help me understand. But you need the grace of God to see. Everything I'm talking about, I understand. It sounds like blasphemy. This is why I don't try to get people to come to my channel. I don't try to send this message out. I don't share this channel at church because I know that the only way someone will come to this understanding is if God is bringing them into this understanding. I'm not going to try to force anybody to understand because it's been hidden till the time of the end and it is the time of the end. So in today's riddle, the answer to many are called but few are chosen, you are of the Lamb's wife, a witness. She's a witness. You are to see and hear only E.T. So the E.T., the Owl of Top, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave me an answer to the riddle of the word himself. Himself. But you need the grace of God to understand. E is the fifth letter. And a double five is a double portion of God's grace. Five represents God's grace. So to understand the answer to the riddle, we need the grace of God. We need a lot of grace. We need a double portion of God's grace. But that also means we will use the letter E two extra times to solve the riddle. All right. So she, S-H-E, and me, who's speaking now? The one who gave me the answer to the riddle, Jesus, is speaking. She and me, L-I-F-E. 
she and me is life is that spiritual life that happens when we come of them when we come from them when we are born of them so the word himself the holy spirit is referred to as a him himself he well the two are one so if you say he no big deal the two are one he and she and it's the two of them that give life so the holy spirit just right now showed me something new holy spirit h s h s the word i'm l feminine i am i'm l e l for the word elohim which is the name of god but f for feminine all right i know i've lost probably most of you but proverbs 8 the excellence of wisdom to understand these things about wisdom you've got to have spiritual understanding so we're going to do this again because the lord just brought it to mind you've got to adjust your eyes if you want 2020 vision you've got to go to the eye doctor and they adjust right you've got to adjust your eyes to see did you see that light come on every single time i do this the light gets brighter and i've been doing this for a year and a half probably 10 times every single time i do it the light gets brighter right when i open up my eyes to see that's a c that's a c to see there are two christs to see two of them jesus and the holy spirit his wife now that doesn't mean i'm speaking blasphemy we already know that the holy spirit is part of the godhead the holy spirit is just as much god as jesus is and jesus said i must go away so the helper comes well she came in the spirit and she's coming in the flesh just like jesus did by the way she's coming in the flesh but the holy spirit has always existed and we're told about her in proverbs 8 many years ago i was reading proverbs 8 and the lord jesus jumped through the page at me was face to face with me and read to me proverbs 8 nothing like that has ever happened to me before or since but jesus read to me proverbs 8 because proverbs 8 is important to the story that he has commissioned me to teach because i have been commissioned by god to do exactly what i'm doing to be an end times worker who says some of these things that are a little difficult to hear and i have understanding about it. i know these things are difficult to hear i know that only god can open up your eyes to the truths of this i don't think you're less than because you don't understand yet no i only understood when god gave me understanding and i know it's the same for you I know it's the same for you. But wisdom in Proverbs 8, she is the Holy Spirit. It's been here all along for us to see. But none of us had eyes to see. And I'm talking God's children did not have eyes to see because it wasn't time yet. Does not wisdom cry out? She takes her stand at the top of the hill. and it goes on but now this is where wisdom reveals herself as the holy spirit 822 the lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old wisdom belonged to god before it all began i have been established since everlasting if wisdom 
has been established since everlasting. She is eternal. God is the only one who's eternal. She is God. She is the Holy Spirit of the Godhead. She is God's wife, the wife of the Lamb. She was there from the beginning, before there was an earth. When there were no depths, she was brought forth. Remember the spirit hovered over the waters, right? When he established the clouds, all of it, there's a whole bunch of stuff she was there for. Why? Because she was with God doing it all. And how do we know that that's the case? Because when we get to Proverbs 8, verse 30, she says of herself, she's telling her story. She says, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. She was beside him as a master craftsman, a creator. She was creating alongside her husband. Jesus is the word, he spoke, God, they're all three in one. There's more to it than you may understand, but that's what we're coming into. We're trying to understand these things. So she was next to him creating everything and she was his delight. He delighted in her. I was daily his delight. Why was she his delight? Because she's his wife. He delighted in her. That's what a husband does. He delights in his wife. And who did she delight in? As is typical in a marriage, the husband loves the wife and wants all her attention, but the wife gives all the attention to the children. Her delight was with the children. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, before her husband, rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men, her delight was with the children because she's the mother. And then in Proverbs 8.32, it says, she's speaking directly to us. She says, now, therefore, listen to me, my children. We are her children. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. For whoever finds me finds life. Jesus is the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But whoever finds her finds life. She and her husband, who are one, are the givers of life. True life, when we're born again, we have eternal life because our parents are now God. So we have within us eternal life. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Didn't Jesus say the only sin that would not be forgiven a man is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? He's like, don't mess with my wife. Don't mess with your mother. Don't speak badly about your mother. Don't sin against your mother. Just like Jesus is the second Adam to Adam, she is the second Eve to Eve. There's so much more. But last year on July 14th, I remember because 777, July 14th, I wrote a song called Amen. Amen is the Strong's number 543 in the Hebrew. And right after I wrote song number 543 called Amen, which is Strong's 543, God said, now calculate, because I do hear the voice of God. And God told me, calculate seven times seven times seven times seven times seven times seven times seven. Seven sevens, calculate it. And I did, because I'm obedient, and I do silly things like that that God tells me to do. Seven times seven times seven times seven times seven times seven times seven. He told me on 714, which is a seven, seven, seven. And the answer 
is 823,543. It's veiled, but it's the wife and the lamb. 543 is the Strong's number in the Hebrew for Jesus. The Amen. 543 is the Amen. We know that the Amen is Jesus, the lamb. And 823, Proverbs 823, talks about wisdom, that she is everlasting, everlasting. 823 is everlasting. Proverbs 823. Strong's 543. Now why is it like it is? Because God knew the second I saw it, I would understand that he's telling me seven times seven times seven. God's favorite number being seven on the seventh day he rested. God's absolute favorite number all throughout the revelation, all throughout the scripture is seven. And when you take those sevens and multiply them by themselves, it comes up with the wife and the lamb, the ones who are the origin of us all who are born again by them. I admit it's a pretty fantastical story. And when you understand it, it's lovely. For many are called, but few are chosen. God bless you.